Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of God, or the Son of Man, rather, will give you. For on him... The Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do, that we may see and believe you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. And whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today uh, we again are in John's Gospel as we had begun on Sundays a few weeks ago. And we'll continue. And today we're in the sixth chapter, a really powerful part of John's Gospel. This is the part that reveals so much of why the Mass, why the liturgy of the Eucharist, why taking the body, blood, soul, and divinity is so critical, why this is such an important part of our of our life in Him. And um, this sixth chapter is a place we're going to camp out for actually a few weeks. We're going to be interrupted by the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary in a couple of Sundays, but we'll be back in it again because this is a very poignant and powerful piece of Scripture Uh, where we need to camp out for quite a while. Now, it takes place right after the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus had fed the 5,000 in kind of a deserted place and then had returned across the Sea of Galilee to Capernaum, his home, where he, as kind of his ministry headquarters, was there. And the people who had eaten the loaves had also followed him across the Sea of Galilee and gotten there because they wanted to continue to be with him. And He basically said that the reason that they came was not because they had heard such powerful words and seen such powerful works. It's because he fed them. In other words, they just wanted to continue being in his presence because they know they'd have a a great meal and uh, they would be fully satisfied. And so whatever they had to do to listen to his teaching and all of that was just fine as long as they can get the food. Well, Jesus uses this to kind of take off on the importance of what that bread signified in them partaking. It wasn't just having a meal. It was an expression of God's sustenance in their lives to continue to call them closer and closer to him. And um, so, again, he said, you know, you're looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate loaves. You, you were fed. But do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. He's turning them away from this bread that they had partaken as being the physical bread to sustain their physical life and showing that what it was really standing for is the um, imperishable and unlimited amount of bread for the soul that would be theirs provided by God 
that he would be giving them the food that they need to keep them moving toward eternal life. And, um, you know, that's the food that they need to work for. But um, he, they, they, they continue to turn it into things that they need to do. You know, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? This is a phrase that still today kind of haunts many in the church. What more can I do to gain God's good graces to get to heaven? How many more good things do I need to do? And we, what we miss is the fact that it isn't doing good deeds that gets us to heaven. It's our faith in Christ. And our faith in Christ leads us to doing good deeds, but it's not the deeds, it's not the works that is our hope for eternity. It's our trust in Jesus. And this is what he says there. Um, uh, he says, um, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. In other words, believe in Jesus. And they said, well, what sign can you do that we'll believe? Remember, we've talked a lot about they wanted a sign for unbelief. But Jesus basically takes them back uh, to their roots because, you know, one of the things, one of the signs that they had of God's favor as they were in the wilderness wanderings after being uh, released from slavery in Egypt is God provided them manna in the wilderness to provide their physical uh, well-being. And they brought that to his attention, to Jesus' attention. Our uh, ancestors ate manna in the desert. He gave them bread from heaven. Jesus said, remember, it wasn't Moses that gave you the bread. It was God, the Father. He gave you that true, and he gives you now the true bread, that what, what was had at the, and, and partaken at the time of the wilderness wanderings was, again, merely a sign of what God wanted to provide for them now through Jesus in terms of their eternal life, their redemption. And so because of that, then they turn and say, okay, give us this bread always. We want that bread. you know. And again, they're trying to look at, well, is it the bread that you had uh, for us before where you broke the loaves and gave them to us? Are you going to continue feeding us that kind of bread and that's going to be our, our bread for heaven? And this is where Jesus turns it on them and says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. In other words, I am the one that's going to satisfy. It's not about physical bread. It is about me being the true bread, your soul food, the one that will give you what you need. And so this is one of the big areas that we need to remember. When we partake of the Eucharist, that bread is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ transubstantiated through the Mass, through the liturgy of the Eucharist, through the consecration prayer, that it becomes for us the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord, that when we take it into us, we are taking in food for our soul and uh, that is conveyed to us through this wonderful, beautiful species, the bread becoming for us the body of Christ. And we're going to kind of dig in a little deeper next week on this as we continue this passage. But this is the key to remember. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. It's not about how many good things we can do. It's about who we trust, who we believe in, and placing our lives in his care. Then, through his grace in our lives, we go out to do those good things. Truly, we do, but we do it as the result, not the purpose. So, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As always, it's really good to be with you. And again, the Lord be uh, willing, we will be together again tomorrow for another edition of Day by Day. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <music>